Well, everyone, it seems it's that time of year again. Tomorrow is New Year's Day. People like to give New Year's shit because they think it's some sort of irreverent holiday that doesn't really mean anything. It's a day just like every other day. But what they don't realize is that humans need to be able to organize and categorize things in order to navigate life more efficiently. Sure, you can be nihilistic about it and say, the day doesn't really have any meaning, but if you look at the emotional and cognitive response of people when they make a New Year's resolution versus when they don't, when New Year's isn't the prime factor in their decision making, there's actually a world of difference and it mostly comes down to the meaning of the individual. They've done studies that show that when people make a New Year's resolution, it actually changes their perspective on the matter. The brain resets, as it were. And so, New Year's, based on what studies have said, is actually a very meaningful holiday just because of the way that humans categorize information. Now, I'm sure that there's many of you out there who are perfectly able to get along fine without needing something like that, just out of sheer willpower, but not everyone is that strong. New Year's is my favorite holiday because making New Year's resolutions is fun. I find it fun to be able to look into the future and try and figure out which goals you want to work towards. Now, I know Buddha says you don't want to look in the future too much, you just want to look in the present, but I also think that planning is essential to focusing on the present, that without planning, we're not going to be able to make it any further. What that quote was really about was looking so far into the future that you lose your footing, that you lose sight of what things are now. What I seek to do with this year is to analyze what things are now and then look at how I can make stepping stones to my goal, to look at the material conditions I'm present within, and to find a way to work within those material conditions to then achieve the goal that I want. I straight up just love New Year's because it reminds me that I can become a new person. Who you are is not necessarily set in stone. If you do research about neuroplasticity, for example, it literally shows that people can become different people. Now, of course, certain things you can't necessarily change, but a lot of it you can. And I think that's very important to realize. So New Year's, I essentially see as the new man holiday. That's why they always say new year, new man, is because literally within the holiday, you're trying to decide how can I become a new person this year. And I think it's important to constantly be trying to change and constantly be trying to be the best person you can possibly be, which is what New Year's is about. It's about trying to change. Change is very important. Which brings me to one of the core problems I have, which is my inability to let go of the past. I've talked about this on many occasions on this channel, that I am not good at simply dealing with the fact that the past exists. I'm diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. That's a different thing, but it is very similar. I don't have a healthy relationship with what the past is. And that's something that I'm seeking to try and change. I'm trying to make it to where I don't have this unhealthy, unrelenting relationship with the things that have happened in the past. I make it to where I can move on and simply be who I am without the past defining me. And there's many people this year specifically who have moved on from me that I have not necessarily been able to move on from. Granted, some of them I have, but an overwhelming majority, I haven't been able to fully accept that they're gone. And I think it's very important for me to be able to realize they've made their decision. Things are just different now. Even when I, even when I do say logically, okay, yes, these people are gone. I understand that I'm not going to be able to get them back and it would be stupid to try and get them back. I still don't emotionally accept the fact that that's happened. I'll find myself just laying on the bed, listening to old podcasts that I did with old friends of mine, and it'll kind of help me accept it, but at the same time, I'll feel a sense of longing for that person. And so, it's very hard for me to be able to deal with the fact that people are gone, but I know that I have to. I know that that's the right thing to do for my own mental health. And so 
what I want to do this year is realize that the past exists and make peace with it, not focus on the past so much. I brought up Buddha earlier in this video, but one big thing that he was about was noticing the present, focusing on it, and accepting the past as already happening, and looking at the future as something that you shouldn't pay too much mind to, that the future is kind of up in the air, and if you keep your head in the clouds, then things aren't going to work out. You have to focus on the present. You have to be someone in the present moment. And that's a message that really means a lot to me. And so what I want to do this year is continue focusing my studies with Buddhism as well as trying to just accept this reality that exists, accepting it, like fully accepting it, not just realizing it on a logical level that these things can't change, but really accepting it, which is, I, I think emotional acceptance and just realizing something on a logical level can be different things. Not for everyone. Sometimes people just hear the logic and then it instills something in them emotionally. And I, I do that for a lot of things, but at the same time, sometimes there's just this lingering emotional feeling that wants to cling onto what the past was. I find myself thinking more and more and more about things that have happened, about the ways that things used to be. And that is unhealthy. It's unhealthy to just sit there and think, wow, things used to be this way. Not necessarily because they were even good, but just because there was comfort in the fact that things didn't change. Now, I've always been someone who likes to change a lot on, on my own terms. I like to constantly be jumping around from ideas. I like to be experiencing big overhauls in how those ideas are expressed, and I like progressing within my own work. But I've never been very good at changing the people around me. When I become accepting of a certain way that things are in my social environment or in my environment that I live in, it becomes very difficult for me to let go of that when things change. One thing I did learn about myself this year between moving to all of these different places is that I clung a lot to the first place that I ever lived in. And I think we all do that. We all get homesick sometimes, unless your home is just abhorrently terrible, which in some regards mine was, but it was where I grew up in. So I, I had that connection to it. I lived there for 16 years. And so when I finally left that place earlier this year, there was part of me that was overjoyed for the fact that I was leaving because I hated it. But at the same time, once I actually left, I felt upset that I was gone because I had a connection to that place. And I think at this point, I don't have that connection anymore just because I've realized that, fully, I've realized that that was not even a good place in the first place. And so times change, material conditions change, and you just need to move on. But when I was living in all of these different states, because I lived in a lot of states this year, when I was living in all these different states, it was hard for me to internalize that. And I felt this sort of void. I felt this sort of ever lingering black hole, you know, this, this kind of sinking feeling that was constantly within my chest that was just kind of there, but I didn't focus on it. I didn't indulge in the emotion per se, but it was certainly there. It was one of those things that you don't want to realize is there. It's one of those things that you don't want to indulge in, but you know the emotion is there, and so I would end up just suppressing it. But the thing about emotional suppression is that the lingering effects of that emotion are still there. You're just not focusing on them or expressing them. So I was feeling this sinking hole of the fact that I wasn't inside of my old home and the fact that I was going to so many different places. And it was really... It was really breaking things in there to an extent, but I would just suppress that emotion because I knew that I, I shouldn't have it. Um, 
And uh, I think that's a very unhealthy way of dealing with it. That's what I've always done with these types of things, is that when things change, I'll suppress the emotion. And then when the emotion gets really bad because it's been suppressed for so long, it all comes out and it blows up in a big way. And so this year, what I want to do is become more healthy and more proactive in, uh, in the area of changes as well as realizing that change is inevitable and that I can't suppress my emotions on that and that I need to find a healthier way of dealing with them and then eventually eradicating the desire to keep things from changing altogether. And so that's very important this year. That, that's probably the most important thing is just becoming more stable in regards to accepting change.